Okay, I'm going to be taking the weekend off, so but I don't want to leave people who might be following my videos with something, not something to think about. You need something to be focused on. I'm taking the weekend off to work on my own things and to feel better. I have a touch of, really hope it's not the flu. Um, <clears throat> it's like a cough. So anyways, um, I was talking about, in my last video, the two out of five rule. Okay, so in test taking, you have, um, I know, I look terrible. I have no makeup on, nothing. I haven't done my hair. I don't care. How about this? Okay, it's not about me. It's about you. If you're doing test taking, and we've got, right now, people are going into spring break in some capacities, depending on what kind of university you're at, or you might have already had spring break, or you're just coming into it. So this would be a good time to do measures that will assist you in your test taking. Because that's my main goal here is not only to help myself but to help you in ongoing test taking. Although I <laughs> lately have been getting hundreds. So, um, and here's how. I mentioned the two out of five rule. Don't mind me, I'm gonna drink some coffee while I'm doing this, so. This thing gives me a double chin. I'm not even that big. Anyways, um, two out of five. Stay focused. Sorry. You get five answers, let's say. In some cases, you only get four. But let's do five. So let's say you have five answers to a question. Okay? Some people already know this rule, but I'm just going to throw it out there for those who have just come upon it like myself. Um, two out of five. Two of those answers are going to be the most likely. Okay? So that narrows down your odds right there. Three, one is going to be totally off the cuff. Just totally randomly no. Just, just a big time that makes no sense. So find that one first. Find that one and say no. So right off the get-go, wrong. Um, then two others, two to three of them, including that one, are going to be what's known as fluff. They're deliberately inaccurate. They're deliberately put on that question to make you think, is that, that doesn't seem right, though. No. So then you've got two. The two out of five. One of those two is the correct one. The other one is very, very close. It's very similar. Very similar to the correct one. In fact, so inherently close that you're possibly likely, your odds are 50-50 on that one. They're so close and it's deliberate. Again, and then in, in comes that word, obfuscate. They are practicing deliberate um, misinformation so close so you're really going to have to make your best guess. You're going to have to make an objective decision is what it's called. And we'll get into that more next week when I start posting better videos than these. But um, focus on that, on the 2 out of 5 rule and the theory of obfuscate. Because they are making you use logical deductive reasoning. So not only do you have to know your material on whichever test you're taking, whether it be legal, whether it be math, whether it be science, whether it just be English or anything like that. A lot of the times they're using this, this type of testing strategy. So I didn't know about this all through all of my education. I just was trying to find the best answer. And, um, oh, also, if you're looking into getting a job or a better job or there is something called organizational behavior which I took a course in and behavioral um, psychology and methodologies um, it involves cultural social norms among people it's social theory and cognitive theories and belief systems it's collectivism v, v individualism so how people work together, 
got a little heartburn, sorry, from the coffee. Um, how people work together as a collective as opposed to how they work individually as alone by themselves. I tend to be a, oh, what is it? Oh yeah, and that's another thing. Look into Myers-Briggs and Carl Jung. Am I saying that right? It's J-U-N-G. Two uh, psychologists and um, and philosophizing of, um, and they, they deal with orientation to authority. Um, they deal with what type of person, personality. And you see, employers will do this. They will set up these employee screenings based on your typical type personality. And they are set up to determine who you are based off of one set of questions. To me, again, bias right there. Right there what I'm going to be talking about, but, you know, these people have set this forth in motion. These people think they know everything. They went to big schools. They paid big money, and sometimes they do. Because, let's take me for example. They're absolutely right. I work much better by myself than in a group. I mean, I like to work with people. I like to be a team player. I like to try, but here's my problem. I can normally weed out the sociopath or someone that others don't deem to be that. I can find them and then they pick on me because they see that I can see them. That sounds crazy, but it's true. They can see that I can see them in this group, this person, this succubus or paramour. Is that the right word? I don't even know. I have to look that up. Someone who is on the outside really it's like a shiny toy you've got the shiny toy and I don't know where the English accent's coming from I'm part Brit but I don't know maybe being around the relatives um, you've got this shiny person this persona that's you know oh look at me I'm so great it's like it's why I like the prodigal son on TV um, because it deals with someone on the outside who is like this major amazing person like they're a doctor you think they'd never do harm to anybody they seem like they're just so great. They're just like the nicest, wonderfulest person. And then, then wonderful is good word. Um, in reality, they're killing people. And I'm not saying, <laughs> not saying that those are actually people out in the world. But you've got that one person that dogs and children are afraid of. Or they're not because they're so good at pretending to be. In fact, it has been proven research-wise that on many of these employment screenings, the best people who pass these tests are actually people in those categories of those who can manipulate and can beat the, the system to their own prevalence, to their own need, which is frightening when you think about it. Because what if it's like a test for a government position? What if it's a test for like president of the United States? And this is a person who knows how to pass and screen psychological evaluations and employment screenings by being deceptive themselves. Completely deceptive. So take that all in. Um, look into the two out of five rule and the theory of making an objective, um, educated, most best guess scenario. I've given you the two out of five to work with, the rule. Think about it when you do your tests. Pra do some practice tests with it. Do some quizzes and see if there's like, if there's four, do the four out of, uh, the two out of four rule. Make it the two out of four rule. Whatever it needs to be. Now that's mostly going to be on like, you know, multiple choice, true, false. Although with true, false, you've either got to pick true or false which will give you a 50-50 chance, and you should be able, if you've read the material, to figure that out from those answers. Now, there are study systems, if you're really having trouble online with Chegg and with these other groups um, where I'm going to be putting myself to, um, because we all have our subjects. My strengths lie in, I believe, business and organization and in um, psychology which I'm getting into more, and in 
I'm very good with grammar and English if you need help with that, writing papers, uh, very long, intricate papers. Um, and I'm really thinking more about how the APA, think about this, one more thing before I go, because I tend to drag on, I know. And I want to make these more exciting. So if you have any, you know, uh, suggestions, tips, let me know. Nothing weird, okay? Um, so, and then see, I get, I get off topic there. And um, 